everyone, and welcome back to another round of Mom Q&A with Mamas Uncut, where we talk about parenting, motherhood, relationships, and so much more based off of your anonymous questions. Again, we got Lisa and Mindy. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello, everyone. Let's get started, shall we? I've been with my husband since we were 15. We are now 27. We've been together for 12 years and married for four. We have two children, a 10 who is 10 and one that is five and a half and one on the way, but he's always binge drinking and he has been since the beginning. However, if we go out together, I will get left to walk home alone and go to a house party. He won't leave and other times he drinks at the house. But the problem is when he drinks, he waits for me to go to bed or fall asleep. And then he leaves the house or climbs out of the windows, et cetera, and goes to answer his phone and won't come back until the next evening. But he's always sorry and says it's because of drinking, but he does it every single time. However, this year when he's been doing it, I have had multiple ladies message me to say that he's been trying to chat with them saying he wants sex and to meet up. He's been crying and saying he's not good enough and he wants to stop, but doesn't know how. I think it's all S-H-I-T. The problem mainly is he works all the hours you can think of, and he does this knowing that he will, his, he will be on his day off but won't tell us. He chooses to work stupid hours. We don't need the money to have plenty of savings, but we never get to do anything as a family, and I'm at my wit's end. Sorry for the long post, but any advice would be very appreciated. A- you're married to an alcoholic. Yes. Yeah. Having just put my friend in rehab and with her being out far too early, I empathize with you greatly. Um, it, and in a world where you're living with an alcoholic, of course they're cheating because they need to do whatever gives them satisfaction or validation or that adrenaline rush in the moment. And they don't think about anything. They don't think about the consequences they don't think about the, the impact it's gonna have down the road. And then once faced with those consequences, you know, they break down, they start crying, you know, they go into self-hate mode, they go into the things that are totally counterproductive to helping the situation. And if, you know, depending on whether you wanna stay with them or not, I think you've got to mandate rehab. I don't know if it's 30, 60, 90 days, but like this guy's gotta get sober. And he's definitely cheating. Yeah. I mean, I think she needs to take a good look at the situation and decide if it's something she really has the energy and desire to yep. cling on to. Because not only, I mean, rehab, it works, but they have to really want it too in order for it to work. Yep. He's, totally. I don't think he's there yet. Maybe it would be a big thing from him. If she said, I'm going to move out, I'm going to give you some space, whatever it is to do a little bit of a reset, they need some intense counseling because this is, their relationship is very, very damaged in lots and lots of ways. He probably needs lots of it all on his own too, because he's, maybe there's something there. Why is he doing this binge drinking? Oh I, yeah there's, there's some sort of a pain or something that he's trying to dull, obviously, or he, it's an addiction, but I think that they're, I don't know. I think it's something that he needs to figure out on his own. And a lot of times there's nothing that anyone around the person can do to help someone who's an addict. That's just the sad truth of it, but you have to decide whether or not you want to be married to an addict because he will be one forever, whether or not he's currently engaging in in the behavior. Plus they had a, they had a, their first kid when they were 17. Right? Yeah. They get, they get pregnant. Maybe that's part of this. Maybe it's the fact that they were together very young. He feels like he's trapped and yeah. stifled. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but there's something that needs to be explored here with what's going on with him because going out and coming back the next day when you have a family I mean it feels very immature so maybe something was stunted in him I don't know getting hammered and then sneaking out yeah right? I did that when I was 16 not when I was not 20. normal for a, yeah <laughs> for yeah. a father of almost three 
Um, right. 20 in his late 20s, you should be moved past that at this point. It's because it's an addiction and something's going on. Yeah. 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 I do think if she decides to like take on and, you know, try to help him, that she needs to have people around her. But I also think your main priority here is the children. You know, mm-hmm. what is this? What is their father's behavior doing to them? Like, is it something that's affecting them? Um, if it's not it and it's something that you think you could handle being a mom of three and, you know, taking care of a husband, trying to get over um, an addiction or through it or coping with an addiction, uh, you have to take that into account before you decide. And then you absolutely need help because you are not going to be able to do it on your own, juggling all of that. So if he has family who's willing to help, I think you pull them on and, mm-hmm. and well, see but- there's, there's also a huge element when you're dealing with an addict of like, what's your part of it? And, and it's not necess- not because it's your fault, but it's like, what do I do to enable that behavior? Right. And like, how do I set boundaries for myself so that I don't get taken advantage of and walked on because- in, Same thing with the kids, yeah. An addict's inherent go-to move is to take advantage of anybody who will let them that's around. Right. Why does this stuff always happen when the lady's pregnant? I know. I feel like that's the common underlying element. Yeah. Thank goodness I got through all of my pregnancies without a lot of drama. Yeah. <laughs> it just bothers me that this has been, I mean, she says it's been happening from the beginning. Yeah, that's true. But, but I mean, it's to the point where she's wanting to reach out and yeah. figure it out right now. Okay. Ugh. There's no way, no way I could imagine being married to the guy I dated when I was 15, to the guy I dated when I was 20, to the guy that I dated when I was 25. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to imagine like people that marry their high school sweethearts. You really have to like yeah. both reinvent yourselves and both fall in love with the new person <laughs> because yeah. wow. Yes. Yeah. I got proposed to by my high school sweetheart and I said, uh, I think we're going to have to break up. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Please, no. no. Well, so I started hanging out with the guy I was dating when I was 15, who was a raging alcoholic, who is now sober. And like, and, and I still drink, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, at, and he gets, we didn't talk, we were like great friends from like, we dated for a while, then we we're great friends till he got married. And his wife said, you can't talk to anybody you've ever hooked up with. And, and they, had, they had this mutual rule. So I didn't hear from him for like 10 years. And we, were, we had this whole like high school friend group. We were all still good friends. So I was, I was like annoyed. Anyway, so probably like five, six years ago, he, he texts and he's like, hey, I'm divorced. Can we just like go hang out and just be fun and do old stuff that we used to. I was like, yeah, totally. God, I haven't talked to you in ages. It's totally great to do that. So, you know, we were friends and we were hanging out again and whatever. And then he pulls the, why aren't we dating anymore? I'm like, dude, that was like 30 years ago. Let's, no, 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 no. I'm just but, like, somebody who doesn't drink. That's a nightmare. Can we <laughs> talk for a second? I love the fact that he respected his wife enough to listen right, to yeah. her and not and not engage with you, even though it's, you, you know what I mean? I like that he has that kind of integrity within himself, yeah. but yeah. I get why it wouldn't work. That's totally fine. But I like him for that reason. <laughs> amazing. Like, I should <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got for you guys. We'll see you next week.